COVID vaccine and IVF, reviewing the latest literature. Hi friends, I am Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified OBGYN and REI, and I've talked about the COVID vaccine a lot on this channel. Today, I am diving into the latest evidence coming out about the COVID vaccine and IVF outcomes. I think this is really essential information. If you have infertility or you're worried about future fertility, we want to know that the COVID vaccine is safe. We've seen so much vaccine hesitancy, and I have an entire playlist that you can go check out and watch other videos. Now, this is July 2021, so I've been making COVID videos for over a year. In this video, I'm specifically going over IVF. When we think of IVF, that's in vitro fertilization. We're taking eggs out of the body, we are fertilizing them with sperm, and then we're letting embryos grow in a lab, and then we're transferring an embryo into the body. IVF often gives us high insight into how bodies are functioning and processes that can go wrong. We also get an evaluation of embryo quality, and we can evaluate other factors. And so I think these studies are really helpful in closing the gap. Does the COVID-19 vaccine cause sterility? No, the answer is no. I have been saying that for months and I really understand people who are still hesitant because your fertility is a big deal. It's been highly stigmatized. People are using your own fear about your future fertility and they are preying upon that when they give you this misinformation. So I am here to set the record straight. We're gonna do a quick literature review and we're gonna go over some of the journals. So I'm gonna break them down for you so we can understand. So subscribe to the channel if you wanna learn more about your body and your fertility and help spread my message of fertility education. Let's dive in. SARS-CoV-2 spike protein seropositivity from vaccination or infection does not cause sterility. Okay, this is really important. So again, we're not going to have a randomized control trial for quite a while. In order to do that, you take one group and you are not going to give them something, so not vaccine. You'd give the other group the vaccine, and then you would expose them to something like COVID and see what happens. We're not going to be in a situation to do that. And so these are observational studies, seeing what happens when people have gotten an infection or gotten a vaccine, and then watching on the other end. The whole reason the rumor that the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine is impacting fertility comes from the idea that syncytion 1, which is an important protein in the syncytotrophoblast or part of the placenta, that that's part of the spike protein and so antibodies against that are going to be antibodies against the placenta. We have no evidence that this is true and these studies are going to be supporting that. So this is an observational study done at an IVF clinic. Everybody had antibody levels drawn prior to undergoing an embryo transfer. Patients who had a positive antibody were asked if they'd gotten a vaccine. If they hadn't gotten a vaccine, were presumed to have been infected at some period of time. Outcomes of the two groups were then compared to those who had negative antibodies, and that's what we're reporting today. The vaccines in this study that these patients got at this timeline were both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. So these are mRNA vaccine, the one that has lipid nanoparticle mRNA vaccine availability. That's what was available. There were 171 embryo transfers performed. Only the first transfer after antibodies were tested was evaluated, so 143 embryo transfers are in this study. All patients had a single embryo transfer of blastocyst. That's a day five or six stage, so they had the same chance of implanting, and all of them had a hormone-prepared uterus, so in controlled cycles. So we're controlling for the fact that they had the similar cycle type and a similar stage of embryo transferred. 37.8% of the patients had a positive antibody level, and of these, 64% were from a vaccine, and the other was from an infection. Patients in the study who had a COVID infection all reported the infection to be mild or asymptomatic, so nobody included here had a severe infection or was hospitalized. There was no statistical difference in baseline characteristics of the patients. This is always important because we look at age and other factors that could influence success. Nothing was significantly different, except the group that had positive antibodies from an infection had a higher BMI or body mass index than those who had antibodies from a vaccine or no antibodies at all. Implantation rate was defined as a positive HCG blood test, and it was not different between patients who had no antibodies or patients who had antibodies, even if the antibodies were from the vaccine or from COVID. So implantation rates was 73.9% in the antibody negative group, 80% in the antibody positive group from vaccination, and 73.7% .7 in the antibody positive group from an infection. These were not statistically different. The study went further and followed these patients and looked at, did they develop a gestational sac, so a clinical pregnancy, so not just implantation, but also clinical pregnancy, and there was no significant difference between the groups. Chance of having a positive gestational sac on ultrasound was 62.5% in the non-antibody group, 
65.7% in the vaccinated group and 52.6% in the infected group. And so I'm going to read the conclusion here for you. We have documented for the first time in women that seropositivity for SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, whether from vaccination or infection, does not prevent embryo implantation or early pregnancy development. Physicians and public health personnel can counsel women of reproductive age that neither previous illness with COVID-19 nor antibodies produced from vaccination to COVID-19 will cause sterility. Boom. Okay, so the second article I want to go over came out in May of this year. Does mRNA SARS-CoV-2 vaccine influence patient's performance during an IVF embryo transfer cycle? So this study actually looked at couples who underwent more than one IVF cycle. So they had an IVF cycle, had a vaccination, and then underwent another IVF cycle. So they are serving as their own control in this study. And so that's wonderful. So we don't have to worry about differences in the population as far as age or BMI or other factors because the person is serving as their own control. So we're comparing them to their own performance prior to vaccination. We had 36 couples who underwent a subsequent round of IVF somewhere between 7 to 85 days after receiving a COVID vaccination. In this study, there were no differences in baseline characteristics, and there were no differences in stimulation types that patients needed. So one really important factor here is that we looked at patients after they got in their vaccination to say if the vaccine had been attacking the ovaries or changing ovarian function, did it change how the ovaries responded to medications? Did you need more medication? Did you retrieve less eggs? Did fewer make it to embryos? And so those variables were not different before and after vaccination. I'm going to put this table up and it's really busy, but just a few things to think about. These patients all had a similar protocol. It took them around the same number of days, no big change. The dose of the medication needed was about the same and their peak estrogen levels and number of eggs retrieved, no different pre and post vaccination. At the time of publishing this, only 10 patients had undergone embryo transfer. Doesn't give us details about stage of embryo or transfer. Three of them were pregnant. None of these patients attempted embryo transfer before getting their vaccine, so there's no way to compare that number. So this study is important in telling us that after receiving the vaccination, we're not seeing a change in how the ovary is functioning, the number of eggs that we're getting, or the requirement of medications needed to stimulate the ovaries to grow. So this should be very reassuring that ovarian function is not changed after receiving a vaccination. We have patients as their own controls. This is great. So when we look at these two studies, we're not seeing a difference in implantation rates from getting vaccinated or having antibodies against incision one at all. So we can say that that spike protein antibodies is not causing sterility or failure to implant an embryo. And this second study is showing us no change in ovarian function after receiving the vaccination. So in IVF patients, our patients who we care so much about and who've gone through so much to try to get pregnant, we are not seeing any adverse outcomes after getting a COVID-19 vaccine. And yet we are seeing pregnancy complications for people who've gotten an infection, and I've reviewed that in multiple other videos. Thank you so much for listening. Would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Really want to bring more information, and I hope that you consider this and consider sharing with people to help get more people vaccinated so we can win this fight against COVID. You can always get more information on the As Woman podcast or follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends.